So we're going to start with the snout. So get whatever white sparkle yarn that you're using for your, your snout to start. So we're going to start with the magic circle. So you just take the white yarn, drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. And then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, and I'm using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook for the snout. Just go under those two loops around your two middle fingers, and you're going to bring up a loop. And then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So you're just going to go into the magic circle, bring up a loop. You have two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. So that's my second. And you want a total of six single crochet into the magic circle. So that's three. Four. Five. And six. So now you're going to take your forefinger and your thumb and you're just going to hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one of them if it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. So just close as much as you can, but don't worry if you don't uh, get it closed completely. You can always close it more later. That's the advantage of the magic circle. Then just let go and take that loose yarn in and pull on that. Then you're going to turn your work so that you're working in rounds. And then we're going to be working into the first stitch in the circle. So now you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into that first stitch. Make sure that you grab both loops and then you're going to make a single crochet. So you're going to bring up a loop and then complete your single crochet. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And you're going to work two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So you just go into the next stitch and then make two single crochet and then you're making two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So now you should have 12 stitches in the round and if you still have a little bit of an opening in the center of your magic circle, just turn your work over and tug on that yarn, loose yarn end on the back, and then that will close up the center of the circle. Now we're going to continue with three increase rounds. So you're just going to take your yarn marker, and I just use one of my scraps of yarn, just place it right where you left off. And for the first increase round, you're going to be making one single crochet into the first stitch, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So I'll make one more set with you. So you make one single crochet into the next stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to your yarn marker. Then you can take and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And for the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So on that last round that we did, you should have had a total of 18 stitches in the round. And since we started the magic circle with six single crochet, 
That means that for after each increase round, all you have to do is add 6, and then you'll know what the increase round stitch count will be. So the last round that we finished was 18. So if you add 6 to that, you're going to get 24. So after you finish this increase round, you should have a total of 24 stitches in the round. So again, for this round, you're making one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and when you finish this round, you should have a total of 24 stitches in the round. Then, for our last increase round, you want to take and move your yarn marker up, and you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into three stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. And when you're finished, add six to the previous round's stitch count. So the previous round's stitch count was 24. You add six, that means you should end this round with 30 stitches in the round. Then, after you finish that last round, you can go ahead and move your yarn marker up, and now we are not making any more increase rounds, meaning we are not going to increase the number of stitches in the round. So now you're going to maintain your stitch count of 30 for the next five rounds. So you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around, and then you're going to maintain your stitch count of 30. When you reach your yarn marker, you're not going to remove it, you're just going to leave it so you can keep track of what round that you're on. So now you can see how the yarn marker helps you. I'm already on my second round, and each time that you reach your yarn marker, you should still have 30 stitches in the round, and you can see how it's starting to form a little cup, which is what you want. And then you just continue making one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of five rounds. So after you finish your five rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you should have a little cup now. We're going to make one more increase round. So you just take and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And when you're finished, you just add six stitches to when we made our last increase round, which was 30 stitches. So after you finish this increase round, you're going to have a total of 36 stitches in the round. Then, after you finish that increase round, go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. And now, you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of four rounds. So for these next four rounds, you're maintaining your stitch count of 36 for each round. So this is how your work should look after you finish your four rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Go ahead and remove your yarn marker, and now you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch. So you take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch, and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through 
both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to make a one single crochet into the next stitch. So just go right into that next stitch, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet. And then that counts as your first single crochet. Now you're going to make one single crochet into the next six stitches. So go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. So that's your first. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet into six total stitches. There's my second, third, and then come back. So now you should have a total of seven single crochet or seven stitches. Then you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch. So go into that next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're just going to turn your work and then make a single crochet into every stitch back across. So here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So now you should still have a total of seven stitches. Then you're going to turn your work and then make a single crochet into the next six stitches. So there's my first. second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Then you can see how we're making the strip that's going to go between the eyes. So now after you finish your sixth stitch, go ahead and turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch which will give you a stitch count of five. So here's my third, fourth, and fifth. Then you're going to turn your work again. So just turn your work and this time you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch and every stitch and you'll have a total stitch count of four when you finish this round. So now you have a stitch count of four and we're going to maintain the stitch count of four now. So you're going to chain one and turn your work. So that chain one counts as your first stitch on the end so you're going to go into the next stitch for your second single crochet, next stitch for your third, and then single crochet in the last stitch. And this counts as your first row for a stitch count of four. And we're going to maintain the stitch count of four for ten total rows. So to move up to the second row, you're going to chain one again turn your work. So that chain one counts as your first stitch for the second row. Go into the next stitch, make a single crochet. So that's my second, third, and fourth. And you're going to repeat this for ten total rows. So I'm going to make one more with you. So I'm going to chain one to move up to my third row. I'm going to turn my work. Again, that chain one counts as the first stitch for the third row. Go into the next stitch for a single crochet for the second stitch. Next stitch, single crochet. And the last fourth stitch, a single crochet. So I just finished my third row. Now to move up to the fourth, you chain one and then turn your work. 
and repeat. So go ahead, finish making a total of 10 rows, and then come back. So this is how my work looks so far. You have the snout portion, and then the portion that goes between the eyes. And then when you finish that 10th row, go ahead and finish off. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop. And then bring enough yarn through to sew, to help sew the top portion of the snout in place. So now you're finished making the snout. We're going to place the nose. So I'm going to show you how to make the nose that goes on your snout. Now if you're using a safety nose, it'll be easy. You just place the safety nose. So if you're placing your safety nose, you would just use the magic circle as a landmark and then count up two rounds. So here's one and then two, and then you just place your safety nose there. So I'm going to show you how to make a nose too if you don't want to use a safety nose. So go ahead and set your snout aside for now and then grab your black colored yarn that you're using to make your nose. So the first thing you're going to do is make your slip knot. So just take your black yarn, fold it over on itself to make a loop, and then take your crochet hook, put it right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook, and then you're going to make a chain of seven. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your first chain, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So second chain from the hook, go into that stitch, bring up a loop, then make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. So one single crochet in every stitch across except for the last stitch. So now I'm at the last stitch. I want to make three single crochet into that last stitch. And as I make those three single crochet, I'm going to be turning my work because we're going to be working on the opposite side. I'm going to go behind my loose yarn end as I make those three single crochet into that last stitch. And then you can see how I've turned my work upside down. So here are the single crochet stitches that we made on the opposite side and now you're going to make your single crochet stitches on the other side and then you're going to be working in rounds. So now you can go into the next stitch on the opposite side, go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet on the opposite side. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch. I'm burying my loose yarn end as I go, so I'm going behind my loose yarn end as I make my stitches. And then you make one single crochet in every stitch except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn end now to get it out of the way. It's nice and buried. And then in my last stitch, 
So three single crochet into that last stitch. And then that will complete the round. Then you're going to take your loose yarn end, and I'm still using my pink loose yarn end, place it right where you left off. And then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for a total of three rounds. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And you're going to maintain the stitch count for each of those three rounds. So for mine, I had 15 total stitches in the round, and I just finished my first round. And you can turn it up so the sides are facing up, and then just continue, leave the yarn marker, and then continue making one single crochet in every stitch around. Now if you are off by one or two stitches from mine, which was 15, a stitch count of 15, that's okay. As long as you maintain your stitch count from this point on with your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Because that will form a cup for your nose. So go ahead, finish your rounds of one single crochet in every stitch for three rounds total. So after you finish your third round of one single crochet in every stitch, then you can slip stitch into the next stitch. Now if you're using a different style of yarn, and your nose seems like it's bigger than with the Karen Simply Soft this size, which this size is approximately an inch. So one of these little squares on my block, table block, is about an inch. Then you can just make two rounds of one single crochet if you don't want that large of a nose, bigger than an inch. So it should be approximately an inch. Then just take, when you're finished and satisfied with the size of your nose, you can slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just go into that next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop, and just bring enough yarn through to sew the nose in place. Now for the nose, I like to use my black yarn as the stuffing and that's only because sometimes you can see the craft stuffing through the end of the nose. So when you use your black yarn as stuffing, so I just take and cut a little bit of my black yarn to use inside of the nose, then you can't see all you see is the black yarn, so it works great. I like to use the black stuffing in my dog noses or animal noses. And then you have your cute little nose ready to be sewn on to the snout. So go ahead and get your snout and we'll sew it in place. So now you just get your tapestry needle and place it onto the long end that you left for sewing. And I usually like to sew my nose on with the long end that I left for sewing towards the bottom of the nose. And then you're going to use the landmark on this, this magic circle as a landmark on the snout. And you're going to count up two rounds, one, two. And then you're going to center the nose. Now make sure that the strip that goes between the eyes is centered with the nose. So you don't want it crooked. You don't want the nose over here and then you have the white spot between the eyes over here. So you want to center it so it doesn't look crooked. So make sure that once you have your nose positioned two rounds up from the magic circle and centered 
between the white strip come back and I'll show you how to sew it in place so then once you're happy with the position you just take your tapestry needle and you're going to sew all around the base of the nose and you want to make sure you keep positioning it so that it's straight and then I just go in and out of the base don't worry if you skip stitches because you can make several rounds the first round is just to hold the nose in place and then you want to continue to poof it out and shape it and make sure that it's centered and positioned where you want it you can see how I have it centered with my white strip and then I just continue sewing it in place and then I just go in and out but you can go through and then go back in so there's several methods of sewing the nose in place so whatever works best for you so you could just go in and then grab your tapestry needle on the wrong side and then just go back in too so whatever method that you want to use and then just continue to make sure you shape your nose as you sew it in place. After you finished sewing your nose in place, you can see how mine is centered right in front of the white strip. Then I'm bring, going to bring my tapestry needle through the center of the bottom of the nose at the base and then just bring the black yarn through. If you don't have enough of the black yarn, then you're just going to get some more black yarn on your tapestry needle and then just tie a knot on the inside and then come up in the same place. Then you're going to go straight down into the magic circle, the center of the magic circle, with your tapestry needle. We're going to make the mouth. So the center is finished. Then you're just going to come up on the side you want to be slightly up at an angle for a smile and then just bring the yarn through and then you want to go right back into the center of the magic circle and then you finished one side of the smile and you can make your smile go up a little bit more too if you want and then just make sure that you're at the same level for the other side and then just come back down through the center then you just take and tie a knot on the inside Now you have a cute little smile on the dog's snout. Go ahead and set this aside. For those of you that want to make a tongue, I'm going to show you how to make the tongue. So go ahead and get whatever color yarn that you want for the tongue. I'm using my watermelon colored or hot pink. Then you're just going to take and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down. Cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make a chain of five. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four, and five. Now you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Let's so go into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and then just make a single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet in each of the stitches back across. And that will give you a stitch count of four when you're finished. Then just chain one, turn your work, 
That chain one counts as your first stitch for this next round. You're going to go into the next stitch over and then make a single crochet, so that'll be your second stitch. Chain one counts as your first stitch. Go into the next stitch for a single crochet for your third stitch. And then the last stitch, fourth stitch, will be your fourth single crochet. Then you can turn your work and make a single crochet into the next stitch, a single crochet into the next stitch, and then a slip stitch into that last stitch. So you go into that last stitch, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, and then go ahead and pull enough yarn through to sew the tongue in place. So you can go ahead and cinch that knot down. Now this is the curve of the tongue. So you're going to take your tapestry needle and then place it onto that long end that you left for sewing. And then you're just going to bring it up to the base of the tongue. So just bring it up through the wrong side and then just slowly stitch it towards the base. So now you're ready to sew the tongue in place. So you have a nice curve at the end. And then you just take your snout and then position the tongue where you want it. So you can place it to the side, in the center, or on the other side, wherever you want to sew it in place. So I'm going to sew it right at the center. And you want to make sure that you don't hide the smile. So just below the black portion of the smile. And then you just go in and out. And sew the base of the tongue only. You want the end of the tongue, the curved end of the tongue, to be free. And you can sew it by going in and out of the snout, too. So you just go in and out. And then sew it in place. Then you can take the shorter loose yarn end, put it onto your tapestry needle, and then just bring that loose yarn end towards the inside of the snout. And then just tie a knot with both of the loose yarn ends on the inside of the snout. Then after I tie my knot, I usually just give a little trim, leave a little bit of a loose yarn end on the inside. So now your snout is finished. You can set the snout aside for now while we start the head. So now we're ready for the head. So the one on video tutorial, I'm using the tobacco color from Yarn B, but you can use whatever um, nice golden lion brand. Also, Vanna's Choice also has a beautiful honey color yarn that you could use. But um, on video tutorial, I'm going to be using the tobacco colored yarn. One of the reasons why I like this style of yarn too is one skein will go pretty far. Even though you'll need a couple of skeins to make the dog, this um, color, there's just a lot of yarn that goes in this skein. So for the head, we're again going to start with the magic circle. So you're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And again, we're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So you just bring up a loop, and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle just like we did before.
and then you're just going to close it up and then just turn your work we're going to work in rounds again and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around just go into that first stitch to make two single crochet and then you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round so there's two four so go ahead finish making two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So now you should have 12 total stitches in the round. If you need to, you can close the center of the magic circle. Now we're going to make three increase rounds, which means we're going to increase the number of stitches in the round. So you're going to take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and for the first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. Uh, actually, we're not making three, we're making eight. So we're going to be making eight increase rounds. So the first increase round will be one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. So we're going to be increasing chronologically meaning that it's going to be in order. So this is the first increase, the next one will be two single crochet, and then two single crochet into the next, then three, then four, then five, all the way up to eight. So I'm going to be showing you each of the increase rounds for those of you that have never done it before. So it was similar to how we did the snout, but the snout is smaller. So for this one, we want the head to be larger, so we're going to be making more increase rounds. So the first increase round, just make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and then you repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back so I'm not going to give you the stitch count for each round because um, I already showed you how to do that with the snout, but I'll just give you this first round. So remember, we finished the last round with 12 stitches. You just add 6 stitches to that, and that means that you should finish with 18 total stitches for that last round. So the next round, you would add 6 more, and that would be 24, and so on. So now, for the next increase round, and remember, we're increasing to a total of 8, not 3. So a total of 8 stitches and then two single crochet into the ninth stitch. So for the next increase round, again we're, we're making them in chronological order. The last round was one and two, so this one will be one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now, after you finish that last round, go ahead and move the yarn marker up and then for the next increase round it's going to be one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and you repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should be getting knowing how to make the increase rounds but I'm going to continue to show you just for the next couple rounds. So we know that the last round was one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So we know that with this increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and you repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. 
So this is how my work is looking so far. And now, this is the last time I'll show you how to increase because now you know we started with one and two and then two and then two and then three and then two and then four and then two. So now you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then you know that the next one will be one and six and then two and then one and seven and then two and then our last increase round will be one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the ninth stitch. So go ahead increase all the way up to one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then come back. So now if you made your increase rounds correctly you should have a total of 60 stitches in the round. Then you're just going to take and move your yarn marker up so now we are not making increase rounds. Now you're going to maintain your stitch count of 60 for each round that you complete. So you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 15 rounds. So 15 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So now after you finish your 15 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around, you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and just leave a little bit of a loop with your yarn. We're going to come back to this later. So this will be in the back of the head and in the front of the head is where we're going to sew the snout on and place the eyes. So now you have two options for the eyes. You can make the eyes like this one with the eyelid on it. And these are 21 millimeter safety doll eyes. And then the eyelids are 21 millimeter safety eyelid eyes, doll eyes. Or you can choose to just use the black glitter portion and the white portion. And also the eyelashes are optional. So if you want to glue on your eyelashes, I glued the eyelashes to the black felt above the safety doll eye. On my blog, I have a free download, www.helenmaycrochet.com. You just have to search for my crochet amigurumi corgi dog, the eye diagram. At the top of my blog's homepage, you'll see where I have graphs and diagrams, a direct link, and you can just go there and I'll have this available there as well. So there's two places that you could find this on my blog. And again, my blog is www.helenmaycrochet.com. This other blog, this other link is to my YouTube channel. And you can cut out these diagrams so you can measure it on your felt. So for if you're making the male eyes or the female eyes and you're using the safety doll eyelids, then you will only need the white portion. So you would use this to cut out a white glitter portion. And if you're using eyes like I made for my female eyes, and you can use with or without eyelashes, this is the size of the white portion, and then this is the size of the black portion. And then if you just want to make your own, I have the measurements here. So for the female eyes with or without the eyelashes, it's approximately one and a half centimeters by two and a half centimeters and then for the black portion it's three centimeters by two and a half centimeters and then for the ones with the safety doll eyelids it's three centimeters by two centimeters so here this is what it looks like for my eyelids and what I'm going to do is cut a hole through the felt so that I can place my safety doll eye through it. So here I have the glitter side showing. I'm just going to fold it in half and then you just take your scissors and then you take right in the center of the fold you're going to make an X. So you're going to make one small cut about two millimeters in one direction and then you're going to go it's actually a triangle, a small triangle 
you're going to go in the opposite direction another one to two millimeters and make a small cut and then that makes a little diamond in the center so you can remove that little diamond and now you have a nice hole that you can put the safety doll eye through so then you just take your safety doll eye and again this is a 21 millimeter safety doll eye and you just place it right through the center and you can trim it now if you need to so if you want to trim a little bit off the bottom you can do that I'm just going to leave mine the way it is but you could trim it if you want to make it so that only the triangular white portions on the side is showing then you just take your little eyelid and place it right on the back and you can see how it fits in there nicely just like that so we're not going to place the safety latch yet because you're going to place this onto the head so you want to count down using the magic circle on the top of the head so I counted down 10 rounds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And underneath that 10th round is where the top of the eye will go. So you want to make sure you go off to the side because down the center is where you're going to have the white strip of the snout. So again, I'm just going to double check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can see the top of the eyelid is right on underneath the 10th round. Now for the one eye, you can go ahead and place the safety latch on the inside. So these go on pretty easily. So after you make sure that your safety eyes are intact, and you have your latch hooked on. Make sure that it's hooked on so it doesn't come off. Then you can take and line up your snout. So you're going to line up your snout and then sew the bottom of the snout first and then you're going to sew the top portion of the snout in place using the white sparkle colored yarn. Don't sew the top portion yet. You can leave that long end that you left for sewing for now, we'll sew that portion later. So right now you'll get a new white colored yarn, the white sparkle colored yarn on your tapestry needle to sew the bottom of the snout. Now make sure that you sew the bottom of the snout one round up. You want to leave this last round free on the head because that's what we're going to use to close the head. So I just joined my yarn on the wrong side and then I just take and go in and out sewing the bottom of the snout only at this time. So you just go in and out with your tapestry needle in the same color yarn as the snout, just sewing the bottom of the snout in place. And then after you sew the bottom, a couple stitches of the bottom of the snout to hold that in place, just make sure that the nose is straight and then you're going to line up the top of the snout right along the edge of the eye and then you're going to take your tapestry needle and then stretch the yarn across the back of the snout and then just come up right next to the eye and sew the top portion of the snout in place so then you just go across and sew the top portion of the snout only. So you're just going right across the top of the snout. And that way you secure the snout right where you want it on the top and the bottom. And then we're going to stuff the craft stuffing into the side. So now I sewed the top portion and you can set your tapestry needle down for now. So you sewed the top and the bottom. You have the sides open but now you can go ahead and place your other eye so you get your other eye and then just place it at the same level on the opposite side make sure that you have them symmetrical then once you have them even they're both placed so that they're level then you can take and put your safety latch on the inside so now both of my eyes are in place then you can take and put some craft stuffing into the snout 
Then you can take and sew the rest of the the white stripe on the forehead down. And this is how my snout looks. You can see how I left the bottom round so we can close the head. And this is what it looks from the side. And if you put the snout on that way, you can see how the eyes are then positioned equally and you have a cute little face. So for these eyes, you could see how I only cut out the white portion for those eyes. And then if you're making the female version, or even if you're that style that I did for the female version, you can see how I cut out a smaller white portion and then the larger black portion, and then they will go on top of each other. So these are from the free download. You can just cut the paper and then use your place them on the felt as a diagram to cut around. And this is what you'll get after you finish using the diagrams. And then you just take one of the black with the glitter facing you and then one of the white and this is how it will look. And then you cut the hole in it the same way. You just fold it in half. Usually I cut one at a time. So you'll cut the white one first and then you'll cut the hole into the black portion. Then you have a little hole that you could place the safety doll eye through and then you can trim up the eye however you want. Just make sure that both eyes look the same when you're finished. And then you can place them the same way that you did for the one that you used the eyelid for. So you're still going to count down the same number of rounds. If you're using a different style of yarn, then you'll want to place the snout onto the head and then determine the placement for the eyes. They should be lined up just above the snout at the base of the white strip that goes on the forehead. And then, if you want the eyelashes, and this is what it would look like with the black portion and the white portion and the safety doll eye, as well as the eyelashes. So I took the eyelashes and I super glued it to the black portion of the felt. I just used some inexpensive super glue. I have a three pack and I've only opened used one so I still have plenty available. And again, you need to be very careful of course and follow all of the safety precautions if you're going to use super glue. It dries really fast so I found that in the past I've gotten it on my fingers. You don't want to get it on your fingers first of all but if you do the only thing that worked well for me for getting it off was the acetone the fingernail polish remover with acetone. So again, just be very careful if you're going to be using the super glue. And also, I used a Q-tip. So you're going to want something to help push down the eyelash onto the black felt. So this is just to show you where I had cut the little paper diagrams out from my free download that I have available. And I used those diagrams to cut the white and the black felt and then I showed you how to cut the hole in the center and then once you put the safety doll eye into the center you can trim it up and make it the way that you want just make sure that both eyes are the same so you don't want to trim one small and then you have one large you want them both to look identical on the dog then you can take your super glue and then for mine I went ahead and placed these onto the dog. So after I put the safety doll eye through both, I placed it on the dog where I wanted, wanted it to be and then I put the safety latch on the inside. So the safety latch holds the safety doll eye as well as the felt, both felts. And I didn't have to sew it at all. So you don't need to sew it in place unless you want to for extra security making sure that it stays on but this is staying on very well and I didn't have to sew it. So once you have it placed on your dog that's when you can take your super glue and then I put the super glue directly onto the felt on the dog and then I took one of my eyelashes 
and if you don't have to put safety glue on the eyelash it has a little bit of sticky substance on it already so all I did was I grabbed the eyelashes and then I placed it onto the super glue on the black portion only just above the safety doll eye and then I pushed it down with a q-tip and then you can add more safety glue on top of the safety the eyelash once it's placed so this is what it ends up looking like so you can see how I just kind of pushed the eyelash with my q-tip and then if you need more glue you can then add more glue to the eyelash. You just have to be careful because if you get glue on the safety doll eye itself sometimes it'll turn white. So that's why I'm very careful and I don't like to add the safety glue after the fact. So I usually just add plenty of safety glue onto the black portion felt and then I push it down with the q-tip and then it's pretty strong. So mine's staying on pretty well with the super glue. And that's how I applied the eyelashes if you want to do it that way instead. And the last option is you can just use the safety doll eye alone and then not even mess with the felt or the eyelashes. So after you finish placing the eyes and fixing the face, then we can take and close the head. So you're going to go back to where you left the loop in the back of the head so we can start to close. Go ahead and grab your yarn marker. Go ahead and place your yarn marker right where you left off and then you're going to make one single crochet into eight stitches. So one single crochet into a total of eight stitches and then come back. So after you finish one single crochet into eight stitches, then you're going to single crochet two stitches together or make a decreased stitch. So you're going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop and then you're going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into eight stitches and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together or it's also known as a decrease stitch because you're decreasing it by one stitch and then just keep repeating that pattern until you get back to the yarn marker so now you should have 54 total stitches in the round and since we're going to be decreasing chronologically in order meaning that last round was one single crochet into eight and then single crochet two stitches together. This next decrease round is going to be one single crochet into seven stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. So one single crochet into seven stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. And when you come back, I'll show you how I figure out the stitch count. So you can see how I have one single crochet into seven stitches and then I'm going to single crochet two stitches together for the decrease stitch. So the last round had 54 stitches total. So all you have to do to get the stitch count for this next round, which we made one single crochet into seven stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, is to subtract six stitches from the previous round. So when you finish this round you'll have a total of 48 stitches in the round. So go ahead and make one single crochet into seven stitches and then make your single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then just move your yarn marker up and then you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. So for those that know how to make the decrease stitches chronologically until we're closed, you can continue on. We're going to completely close the head. So for those that have never done it before, I'm going to continue to show you the steps. But for those that already know how, just keep closing until the head is completely closed. So 
This next decrease round is one single crochet into six stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you can see that if you're doing it correctly the hole is getting smaller and smaller so it's a gradual decrease as it closes the head. So now for your next round you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Then, you guessed it, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then, you're going to want to add your craft stuffing and you can add craft stuffing, more craft stuffing as you close. And then after you add the craft stuffing, you're going to make, you move your yarn marker up and then you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. And then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you just move your yarn marker up. You can see we're almost closed. Looks really good. Gradual closing of the head. Then you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern. So one single crochet in one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together all the way back to the yarn marker and then come back. So now you can remove your yarn marker and you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed or until you just can't make any more single crochet two stitches together. And then you're just going to slip stitch close. So I'm just going to make one more single crochet two stitches together and then I'm going to slip stitch it closed. So to slip stitch it closed you're just going to skip a stitch and then go into the next stitch and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to slip stitch all the way around until the work is completely closed. So once the head is closed then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you can take your tapestry needle, put it onto that loose yarn end, and then just go right in where you finished off, and then come out anywhere on the head, and then just pull that loose yarn end to bury it. You can see how it buried it nicely, and then you just take and trim that loose yarn end, and then that buries it, the loose yarn end into the head. So now I'm going to show you how to make the ears. 